how forcible are right words. The word of God in the mouth of his messenger is power. Somebody said God will make you. As you listen to God's anointed messenger, Pastor Cornelius Homer, get set to be launched into a realm of all realm possibilities. It is a light that dominates. Amen? It, what dominates? It is light that dominates. Thank God for your prayer, but now it is time to be a world warrior. One who carries light. One who possesses enough light. When light is enough, darkness will give way. The reason why you are still seeing some shadows here is not because the shadows are powerful. It's because of the intensity of this our light. Alright? If the intensity of this light increases to a point, you won't see some of these shadows. And will you see them? You won't see any shadow anymore. So the intensity of the light determines how much you dominate the realm of darkness. Hallelujah. This morning, may your heart open to contact light in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I say, may your heart open to contact light in the mighty name of Jesus. The light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Anything is changeable by light. Anything. It is changeable by light. It is light that produces quality sound. That is, if you are speaking, what makes your speaking to carry quality power is what? Light. That is why light travels faster than sound. Anytime rain is falling or about to fall and before a sound comes, one minute, two minutes before, what do you see first? The light. When you see the light, then you must hear the sound. Hallelujah. So what causes our voice to produce a sound in the realm of the spirit is the light. When the light shows forth, the sound must reflect. It must answer. Hallelujah. So what you need is light. What you need is light. What you need is light. That is why sons and daughters, those who, are, who belong to the Father, they don't operate on function by feelings. What they hear, they operate by light. It doesn't matter what I'm hearing around. A thousand may fall at my side. Ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. Only with my eyes I will behold the reward of the wicked, but it shall not come near me. That is light. That is a sun that is operating. Hallelujah. Your level of knowledge is what determines how much of a son that you are in this kingdom. You can now see that many have been in church for years, but they are still babies. Because light is very, very minimal. Amen? Light is what? Very, very minimal. Some time ago, I went through a strenuous schedule, ministering almost one week back to back. So when I returned, I was feeling some kind of tiredness. So I felt... Let me rest. And I lay down to rest. That was some years ago. And, and I discovered instead my body temperature went up. Ah. All of a sudden, my throat became sore. Something was growing there. Pains. I couldn't talk normally. And that, that week, the Friday was to be an all night. And this was Monday, Tuesday, going to Wednesday, which was to be a midweek service. I tried and I told my wife, boil water for me, we boil water, pour there, wet a uh, rag that is hot, put on my head while lying down. The thing was not, it was not, it was, it was not happy about the treatment. <laughs> so, I, I just sat down and I began to pray in the spirit. That was on the third day and I began to browse through scriptures. In the midst of, while I was browsing through scriptures, I didn't hear anything, but I just kept praying. About an hour, two hours later, I wasn't even praying that time. I was just sitting there when I heard the voice from the word. He said, if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scriptures cannot be broken. Ah, it fired in my spirit. I said, what? He said, by interpretation, 
those who receive the word are gods. And the physical elements of the world can no longer hold them. I say what? It's, okay, open your Bible. I opened to some other trans. I read like four, five translations. Let me show you. Maybe, maybe you will see something there. Let's look at John chapter 10, verse 34. If you have another translation apart from King James, like maybe NIV amplified. Amplified even finished the matter. <laughs> Give me amplified because of our time. Yes. Okay. Oh, Jesus answered them. Is it not written in your law? I said, you are God's human judges representing God, not divine beings. Verse 35. If he called them God, men to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be undone. Aya, this aya, or annulled or broken. It cannot be undone. Scripture don't done. They know if you undone them. It, it, it cannot be undone. The moment that scripture fired in my spirit, remember the spirit entered into me when he spoke unto me. Something surged in my body right where I was sitting on the bed. And I felt something electric moving in my body. Immediately the pain on the throat disappeared. I didn't say tomorrow. Immediately. All of a sudden, under two hours, the voice started clearing off. Before you know it, by that, the temperature collapsed. That was the end of the body temperature and the soul throat. The Wednesday we had middle service, the Friday we had all night, and nothing happened to the voice again. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be, that is light. Amen? So, sons and daughters of God, I'm using daughters so you can understand. In case somebody said he's talking only about male people, I'm talking about all of us. Amen. What makes us so is the level of light that we possess. Is the level of light we possess. Is the level of light we possess. If you do not access light, your life will not change. You will keep coming to church. You will keep hearing messages, and nothing will happen in your life. What you need is what light. What you need is what. What you need is what. What you need is light. Your access to light received now in the name of Jesus. I say access to life receive now in the name of Jesus. Now, notice. Let's take a progression. We started by saying what you need is light. I want you also to understand, just put up this point. Your spiritual status determines what is released to you per time. Your spiritual status. Remember we said your spiritual status is determined by what? Hello, is determined by what? Your spiritual maturity is determined by what? Now, the next point is that spiritual status determines what God puts into your hand per time. The, we, we live in a kingdom that is operated by rules. It operates on rules. It operates on laws. Let me call it that way. And one of the laws is that your capacity in the spirit, I didn't say your physical capacity, your capacity in the spirit determines what is committed into your hands per time. Your capacity in the spirit. There are visions you will never see because you don't have the capacity for it. In your dream, you can't see it. In your imagination, it won't cross because you don't have the capacity for it. But when spiritual capacity is enhanced, by light that you have contacted, then what happens next? Then you can catch the vision for that level. There are possibilities your mind cannot go near until your capacity is enlarged. The Bible said in Matthew chapter 25, let's read it. Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 to 15. There was a master who wanted to go on a journey, and the Bible said he called three of his servants and he gave them some gifts. The Bible said he gave it for it is just like a man who can you get back to King James, please? Say the kingdom of God of heaven is as a man traveling to a far country who called his own servant and delivered to them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another he gave two, to another one, to every man according to his several ability. Everyone got their capacity. Amen. God is not a waster. 
So it will not commit into your hands. It will not release to you what you don't have the capacity for. Amen. That is, if what you are looking for, you are interested in getting it from God. Listen to me. There are many ways to get a car, for example. Many, many ways. You can take a loan, buy a car. You can um, borrow money and buy a car. Okay? You can call somebody and put the person under pressure. And after a while, the person says, this person told me too much to buy a car for the person. There are many ways. You can get those cars. Amen. Those are different ways you can get a car. But there is a car that you can get from God. Now, as far as the one you get from God is concerned, before it, end, it is released to you, they check your capacity for it. Now, those other ones that are coming from different places, <laughs> remember I told you, they are all temporal. Because... Those are the kind of cars that may later be involved in an accident or the kind of cars that armed robbers will later collect or the kind of cars that will cause problem in the marriage or a kind of car that will cause you to become a liar or a robber because now the man has given you a car and anything he asks from you, you cannot say no anymore. Amen. But the one that comes from God is the one that endures. However, God checks your capacity before he commits it into your hand. Amen. It checks your capacity. This car I gave this guy, this guy is about to get now. If there is an arrow from somewhere, and they say this, this guy must die because he, he has a car, does he have the spiritual stamina for the arrow not to come? Does he have the stamina for the arrow to return to where it's coming from? If they check and you don't have the stamina, they say, see, let this guy be trekking for the next one year. So he can build capacity. Are you hearing me? That is why you discover there are people, at times there are strong people go through some tough times, some tough things. You know why? God at times allows it because you know the man will, he will pass. Why did Daniel go into the lion's den? It's not everybody God will allow to get to that point. He allowed Daniel to get, this one, that's not, Daniel does have a problem. He has that capacity. Amen. So he passed through the situation and then he was promoted. Shadrach, Mishael, and Abednego entered the fire. God left cheat, allowed it because he saw that they had the capacity. So they went through and they came out. Some time ago, I was talking to the Lord and asking many questions because some of us who are privileged to be founders, you may not know, but there are many, many things. For example, I counsel everybody, but who counsels me? Or for example, when somebody is in need of 5,000 or 10,000, somehow people believe that Papa is the answer. And then you get text messages and people come and say, Sir, I, am, I have not eaten, I have not this, I have not that. If me have not eaten, who do I go to? Have you ever asked yourself that question before? <laughs> Sir, I have not paid my child's school fee. If me have not paid my children's school, where do I go? Who will, who will I complain to? Amen. And those that we have as fathers, we connect with them, we relate with them. But the truth is that we cannot, we cannot be bugging them all the time. Hallelujah. There are not people that today you call, tomorrow you call, next tomorrow you call, or just walk into the office like that. Hallelujah. So you just discover that there are things you bear. There are things you carry. I'm not complaining about it. I'm just giving you an example. And God said to me very loud while I was praying one evening. He said, son, it's because the capacity for it is there. That is why I allowed you to carry the assignment. There's capacity. There are things I can't share with anyone. Amen. For example, example, <laughs> if I begin to feel somehow in my body, all right, based on my training in the word of God, that is rubbish to me. You understand? So, I tame it, I handle it by the word of God and I continue living my life. All right? Maybe at that time, my wife was feeling something. Okay? Now, my encouragement to stand on the word of God to encourage her is that not so that this thing will be done. Why encouraging her? I cannot tell her that may have been feeling like this for some days now. You know, some men who don't understand their place as men, they do it. Wife said that is doing me, say even me, my throat is doing me. <laughs> I, I cannot open that up. Not because I don't want um, maybe care or attention, but because if I open up, it will affect our own healing. So I will apply whatever it is based on the word of God and encourage her for our own healing. 
without even mentioning that this is happening to me, I apply the same word and I get my healing. I will not mention it. If everybody lay down, they say they are sick, and me too, I lay down and say I'm sick, what happens? You come to church one day, and I call it here, and I sit down here. I say, sorry, oh, I am sick. Half of the church will go home. You say, eh? <laughs> so why are we here now? Amen. Is someone here on I'm saying to me? But you see, there is a capacity for it. The capacity to be feeling a, a, a pain here and still stretch up my hands for the healing of others and they are healed and apply the same word to my own and be healed. It is capacity. Are you hearing me? A child is in the hospital, yet I'm still casting demons from the life of people and I'm aware that that child will be okay. I don't stand on the people who say, church, you know, today I didn't tell all of you my son has been in hospital for 10 days. Many of you didn't know when it happened. Did you know? Some didn't know. I will come, do first service, do second service, enter the car and go to hospital for third service. We pray and hold the child and declare the word of God. The next Wednesday service, I'm still here. No announcement from the people to tell you that anything is wrong somewhere. Because songs have capacity. Is somebody hearing me? It's capacity, capacity. Listen to me. Your mother in the village or in town, your father, your brothers and sisters who don't know God, for you to go to them and be complaining is an abuse of your sonship. Are you hearing me? They are expecting results from you. I, you are the light of the world. A city that is set upon a hill that cannot be healed. You now carry wahala, carry your problem. You go and start recounting problem to them. That is not sonship. God said, you want to be a son? Build capacity. Then I will drop some things on you. Is somebody hearing me? Build capacity and I will drop some things on you. From today, capacity is released upon your life in the name of Jesus. There are things God can't come into. You live a life of complaint and murmuring there. You are not a son. There are things that can't be committed to your hand. It is you have not even been given anything serious to do yet. And then memory complaint is around your life. What happens? He said, if you run with horsemen and they weary you, then how will you be able to run with chariots? If you run with men on foot and they weary you, how will you run with men on horses and chariots? He said, if in the time of peace you are already wearied, he said, what will you do when Jordan begins to swell? Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. You build capacity capacity when there are things that God begins to release into your life. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 1 to 3. Isaiah 54 verse 1 to 3. He said, Sing, O barren, thou that did not bear, break forth into singing. Cry aloud, thou that didst not travel with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, said the Lord. Next verse, my focus, enlarge the place of thy tent. Let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitation. Spear not, lengthen thy court, strengthen thy stakes. Why? Because you will now break forth on the left and on the right. That is, before the breaking forth will come, the, uh, the enlargement must happen. Before you can expand, you must enlarge your capacity. He said, I want to do something. He said, I want to fill the place. You will break forth on the left and on the right, but enlarge your capacity. Enlarge your capacity, your ability to receive what I'm about to release. Enlarge it, enlarge it, enlarge it, enlarge it. In the name of Jesus, I decree that enlargement is taking place right now. I said that enlargement is taking place right now and you need a, you need mobility a car and large your capacity for it are you hearing me you need divine health and large your capacity for it you need God to bless you with a good marriage and large what your capacity for it you need God to bless you with a good job and large your capacity for it you want to be shifted to a higher position in your office and large your capacity for it whatever you need it answers to the law of enlargement where you enlarge the capacity the thing must come is somebody hearing me? When you enlarge the capacity, the things must come. It must come. It must come. It must come. Anything you have been praying for answers to capacity enlargement. Another point, very important. Ooh. 
before I say that point, there's a popular saying that the largest room in life is called improvement. The room for improvement is larger. You can be better than who you are now. It doesn't matter how far you have come. It doesn't matter what you are doing, how well you have done, you can do better. It doesn't matter where you are now, you can move higher. There is always room for improvement. Until when? Until when you leave this world. If you are still alive, each day can bring an increase. If you are still breathing, there is more. You hear what I say? If you are still breathing, there is what? If you are still breathing, there is what? There is one more level you can go. There is one more realm you can enter. There is one more possibility you can attain. There is one more miracle you can handle. If you are still breathing, there is more. There is more. Tell them there is one more level. Tell them there is one more realm. Tell them there is more. Hallelujah. So don't conclude on yourself. To conclude on yourself is to commit suicide. When you conclude on yourself, you have finished yourself. Hallelujah. Because God is not concluded with you. God is writing a book through your life. And the book is in chapters. And you know at times when you are reading some books, you are getting to the end of chapter 3. It's so interesting, so wonderful. And you feel, man, this book is at the peak, but there is a chapter 4. And there is a chapter 5. No matter how much you have enjoyed in chapter 3, you have to move to chapter 4. Then move to chapter 5. Jesus Christ said, according, <laughs> according to the volume of book, it is written of me. I have come to do thy will, O Lord. The Bible said in the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 17, he entered the temple and he was given the book of Isaiah and he found where it was written concerning him. Meaning your, your, your life has been written and all you are doing is acting out what has been written. Is somebody hearing me? You act out what has been written. So it doesn't matter the face that is there right now. I want you to know there is a next face. I said there is a next face. There is a better face. There is a better level. You have not arrived yet. You are just at an, a, an, a, a bend, a bend, a corner. You have not gotten to your end yet. Anyone who has concluded about you is making a big mistake because God has not even started with you yet. I said God has not started with you yet. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There is a next level. And you are moving to that level. Galatians chapter 4. Verse 1 to 9. I'll read it very fast. Now I say that the hair, as long as he is a child, it differeth nothing from a servant, even though he is Lord of all. Remember I told you at the beginning that the difference between a child and a son is what? Light. So what the Bible is saying here is as long as you do not operate by light, you are a child, and you are not different from a servant, even though what your father has belongs to you, yet you cannot possess it. It can be yours, but you have not possessed it because you are still a child. He said, so he is kept under tutors and governors. So they can groom him until the time appointed of the father. Verse 3. Even so, we, when we were children, we are in bondage under the elements of the world. That is, just keep that one there. That is point, the next point I was about to call out. The sign of being a child is that the elements of this world are still surmounting and controlling your life. It's like you are in bondage to the element, to the systems of this world. You are still held bound by the systems of this world. It's like that is what shows that you are still a child. Things still control you. In Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12 to 14, I'll come back to Galatians. Just move quickly because of our time. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12 to 
14 from verse 12 for when for the time you ought to be teachers you have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of God and you have become as one who have need of milk and not of strong meat for everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness are you saying that for he is a babe it's unskillful but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age Aye. even those by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil the elements of this world still controlling your life you are still in bondage to the elements of this world it means you are still a child meaning as you grow and you mature in the spirit the elements of this world will begin to lose their capacity over your life the lust of the flesh will lose its capacity the lust of the eyes will lose its capacity the pride of life will lose its capacity you will have the ability to carry what do you call humility is humility weakness no Humility is simply authority under control. Power is there, but it's under control. You are no longer subject to the elements of this world. You have the money, but the money you have has not caused your head to grow big. You have the money, yet you are serving God, yet you are worshipping God with it. I saw there's one millionaire, they call him Shin Mark. I've been following some of his stuffs. And this guy is a very correct billionaire. He's a conk one, but a child of God. He will dance and pull his, his shirt and remain singlet. And remove the shoes inside sand. And dance until he lie down flat on the ground. He's in the media department in his church. Holding a, you see him doing video and doing service. I mean a, 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 a millionaire. That is somebody who has organ, an organization and has companies in Dubai, India. He, ha, he held a, 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 a little um, get together or book fair something for all the gospel musicians in Nigeria. Prosper Shimana, Owe Abutu, Imasing, Dosio, they were all there. That is to tell you the kind of person that he will dance. It's not once or twice. So. He will dance and pull the shirt to remain singlet. I'm telling you, dance crazy. Pray and lay hands on somebody. The person fell under the path. Somebody was looking for him and said, Oh, I need the secret to, uh, to success in business and all that. I've been looking for him for years. When the person finally saw him, he was sitting down in just in one side. And the person came. And he told the person, this and do this, do this, do this, do this. Okay, okay, I can assist you with one or two connections. But, but above all, collect in partition. He was laying hands on the person who is not a member of their church or in that line. And workers have to come to hold the person from behind. Because of the power flow. He has money, but money doesn't have him. You know why some of us are still humble? So to say, money has not come. God is saying, I know you. He said, Lord, try me. He said, I've, I've checked you. I try people by their hearts, not by what enters their hand. Say, God, try me. Give me and see. God said, no. It's your heart I check to see. You want to handle wealth, grow to the point where wealth can't affect your mind anymore. Amen. little money there are people they can't, they can't relate with anymore somebody that was your friend says no longer your friend today not because anything happened but because the level have changed so no no we don't we don't move with poppers no we don't move with poppers no 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 i'm now my we move with high men big men man big shots so guys step up step up step up step up if you want to relate with us amen The elements of this world. Listen to me if you're a pastor, a minister. You God will not commit to you a beloved daughters, precious daughters, if he knows your capacity to handle girls is minimal. 
he won't commit to you the fatherhood of his children. Is what I'm telling you. You will be praying for sons that, that they won't come. God won't give them. You are a wolf. You will eat the sheep. Wolf eats sheep. Shepherds lead sheep and guide sheep. So when you are a shepherd, the sheep will come. When you are a wolf, they will run. God will take them away from you. So if you don't have the, the you have not overcome, God said you are still a child. There are people in ministry today, they are, they are preaching around, standing around there, have no capacity to withstand feminine temptations and, 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 and seductions. They, that is, but the one that tempted them, they fell. The one that did tempt them, they tempted themselves. He cannot address a group of sisters without seeing something. He's a babe. He's a child holding the microphone. And so he might be there preach for years. Yet God said, you are not in ministry. I have not given you ministry. Ministry is assignment. So you can be talking without assignment. Bondage to the elements of this world. Every form of bondage to the elements of this world is destroyed in the name of Jesus. When God sounded from heaven in Luke chapter 3, this is my beloved son. In him I am well pleased. You know what happened in chapter 4? Satan came and used the element of this world to, to try him. If you are the son of God, turn this stone to bread. Jesus said, I am hungry, but it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. He said, okay, in that case, climb on this mountain and jump down. You have power. You will not crash. Angels will hold you. Jesus Christ said, you shall not tempt the Lord thy God. The power is there does not mean it should be used all the time. He said, okay, look at the whole world. The, 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 the houses, the cars, the everything. But before me, I will give it to you in a moment. He said, no, 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 Satan, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. Him only shall thou serve. All these things you are showing to me, they are good things, but how you get them matters. If you got them by bowing to the devil, to the systems of this world, you lose your place in destiny. Sonship, maturity in this kingdom is determined by how much the word of God has begun to show forth in your life. Amen. The word you have been hearing, what you have been learning, is now producing in your life. When you act, we see the word you have heard in your life. Amen. When we talk about sickness, for example, your actions, the words you speak, tells us that what you have been hearing is not nothing. Amen. It's not nothing. You say, oh, I'm feeling like this. But yet, say the inhabitants of the land shall not say, I am. So a son will no longer say, I am feeling like this, I'm feeling like you. He won't confess his feeling, he will confess the word. The Bible said, we are, he didn't tell us to, conf to, to confess sickness. He didn't tell us to confess the situation. He said, you shall confess. What will you confess? The word of God. He said, if you shall say to this mountain, be thou lifted and be thou cast into the sea. And you will not doubt in your heart, but you shall believe that which you say. He said, you shall have whatsoever you say. Said the Bible said in Matthew chapter 12 and verse 37, by the words of thy mouth, thou shalt be justified. By the same words of thy mouth, thou shalt be condemned. So whether you are condemned or justified is dependent on you. It's so important that in Isaiah 54, 17, he said, No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Give it to me on the screen. And he said, Every tongue that what? That what? Who will condemn? Let's read it. Oh, he said, Isaiah, is it 54, 17? No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, who shall condemn? Come on now, who shall condemn? Who shall condemn? Who shall condemn? So if they spoke, it can only happen when you agree. But when you condemn, I'll talk more about that in the next service. When you condemn what they said, it cannot happen. But let me branch this more. When they say a thing and you see it in the dream, he said, thou shalt, every tongue that rises against you, thou shalt. You saw yourself in the grave in the dream and you wake up, what do you do? Thou shalt. Until you accept it, the dream cannot happen. Thou shall condemn. Those are songs. 
are those are sons, those are sons, those are people who are matured in the spirit. Today I decree that the elements of this world will no longer hold you bound. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, the point comes where there is nothing anybody does to hurt you that you cannot dust off. It's like pouring water on the back of the dock. You pour it, boom. What? I'm a son. I'm a son. I'm a son. There's nothing you do that will make me to keep malice with you. Nothing you do that will make me to keep off of this with you. No, 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 no. Leave the church. If you still see me outside, we greet ourselves. Amen. It's not, it's, not a, it's not a big deal. Is somebody hearing me? Not make somebody an enemy because of anything. You know there are some people that are enemies because you were buying something from their shop and then other shops sometimes you decide to buy things from other people's shop. And any time you are passing by and you are already holding a letter, the person is already angry because you didn't buy the thing in the shop. That is why that shop will remain small forever. Why will he pass me and go somewhere? They are carrying my customer. Oh boy, calm down. You are not, those things no longer bother you. Somebody looked at me one day. I've had some funny experience. He said, we're in a meeting. Very powerful program. Many, many years ago. Somebody was talking and saying things. Then he touched me. I looked at him. Service was going on. He said, for example, my destiny is greater than your own. I said, wow. He said, you gave your life to Christ when you were younger. I gave my life to Christ after experiencing many things. But my destiny is greater than your own. I said, oh, awesome, 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 awesome. No, you don't argue some things. No, the more you, are, you argue, the more you are empty. Argument means you don't have the proof. Men with proofs don't argue. They show their proofs. I say, oh, no problem. I don't. Is it not for, the, for him to act? just make him happy? No challenge. Amen. We graduated. When he told ministry, ministry crashed. He opened it, it crashed. He's doing business now. I left the ministry. Complete. For over eight years now, I've left the ministry. Amen. But I've had occasion to meet him several times to encourage him in the Lord and for us to discuss one or two things. And I've never once mentioned, you remember what you said? It's not, it's not necessary. Amen. Somebody went on Facebook many years ago and wrote, <laughs> oh Jesus, and said he was writing a, a word from God because when a fellowship and then when handing over was done to us, the person walked up to me and said, I thought you would still be under me. So you are still my boss. After the next session, we handed over to physically. So when we finished the session, the person went on, on Facebook and began to name myself the president. The, those, the, he named those of us that were ahead of him and said, God said he should give us a message, a piece to, according to the book of Revelation. Laodicea, he said, this one, your works, God, I've tried it, it's empty. So me, I was the major person. He said, <laughs> he said a lot of things, you know. You are sent by the devil. You have allowed the devil to be using all manner, all manner. So I was, my phone began to ring one day. I picked it. Somebody said, have you gone on Facebook? I said, what? He said, they are writing a, a lot of things are there about you. I said, hey. before I know, mentors started calling. I said, have you gone to internet? Why, what was happening that they wrote against you? I said, I have not gone. Do you know what? That was in 2013. I have not seen it in now. Yes, I didn't read it till now that I'm talking to you. I don't know what he wrote. Oh, people were <laughs> people were saying what he wrote. They were, ah, this, that, that, that. At the end of the day, they called him. He said, this, that, they counseled him. Me. Somebody said, are you fighting? I said, fighting. It takes two people to fight. I'm not even aware of what he's saying. How can we fight? Till now, I've not gone there to say, let me check what he wrote. Eight years ago, it's not necessary. See, life has its own battles. Don't carry load by yourself. Don't, don't make things hard for yourself. There are things you can avoid. There are things you can avoid. Okay, you now. Ask yourself, is it Satan that sent you? Are you working for Satan? What they are saying, is it true? If it is true, you need to adjust. But if it's not true, follow God gently and let time prove things. The truth will come out at the end of the day. Hallelujah. It's eight years gone now. To the glory of God. Amen. 
and the truth is clear for all to see. Praise the living God. I say praise the living God. Let me round up. So, the scripture we're reading in Galatians chapter 1, verse, um, we stopped in verse 3 or 4. Verse 3, okay. Let's continue from verse 4 now. And let me wrap it up. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of what? Of sons. So that is telling us that we too have become sons. And what does that mean? Verse 6. And because we are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying, Abba. Who, what does he send? The spirit of his sons. I dealt with that on Wednesday. That is talking about the nature. The spirit of his son is the nature of sons. And we talked about that. That talks about what? Talks about your surrender to his will. It talks about your, your readiness to run his errands. It talks about um, your urgency in obeying instructions. Amen. He said, he has sent forth his spirit. Wherefore, you are no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then you are heir of God through Christ. <laughs> you see, Bible is so sweet. The way you connected it. You are heir of God. If you are a son, then you are a heir. Heir means someone who has an inheritance. And not just that, the Bible said we are joint heirs with Christ Jesus. We are what? We are joint heirs with Christ Jesus. The Bible said that um, in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 17, that's where you see that, that we are joint heirs. We are joint heirs with Christ. We are joint heirs with Christ. So Christ is heir and we are joint heirs so what are the things that Christ has inherited that we, we tap into? The Bible is speaking in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2. Give me Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2 quickly. Oh, Jesus. It will be up with this within another five minutes. Okay. Verse 1 and 2. Verse 1 and 2. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in this land they spoke to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of how many things? All things. So Jesus Christ, the Son, is heir of all things. And Romans 8, 17 says, we are joint heirs. So whatever Christ has possessed, whatever Christ has access to, we also have access to the same thing. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. In Revelation chapter 5 verse 12, we see those things. But before we go there in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17, Ephesians 1 17 to 23, Ephesians 1 17 23, it talks about Paul was praying. He said, I cease not to pray for you that the God of glory uh, might give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding, being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us what who believe according to the working of his mighty power uh -huh, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places far above principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come verse 22 and has put all things under his feet hallelujah and gave him to be held over all things to the church. All things to who? He collected all things to who? To the church. And in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6, verse 5 and 6, the Bible tells us that when he was raised like that, the reason why we are joined as we that we were raised together with Christ Jesus and we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That is Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 5 and 6. We are seated together with him. So as he's seated and he's, everything is under him, everything is under us. And he's made head over all things to the church. What are those things? Revelation 5 verse 12. What is the lamb that was slain? Now, you can mention those things in your own language, but anything you ever need in life is under these seven, seven broad headings. What is the lamb that was slain to receive power? 
and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Anything you need in life is under these seven headings. So he's saying that Christ is here and he was here to inherit these things and we are joint heirs to inherit these things. So what makes you a son is your, your, your conviction about this, your inheritance, your light, your understanding that these seven packages belong to you. You are not cursed, you, are, you carry the blessing. You are not weak, you are strong. That is why I say, let the weak say, I am strong. So by the time you go say, I don't know the way I'm feeling. I'm, I am feeling weak. It is, it is an evidence you are still a child. Come up, come up, come up, come up, come up. Grow up where you don't, you don't confess those things, but confess the word. He said, let the, 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 the weak say, I am strong. He said, let the poor say, I am rich. Did you see that in your Bible? So he said, we possess wishes. Christ, God, though he was rich, yet for our sake, he became poor that we, through the sacrifice on the cross, might become rich. And wisdom, and wisdom. He said, wisdom shall be the stability of thy times. Stop. You cannot be stable until you are wise. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, Who has not the mind of Christ that he might instruct him? For we have the mind of Christ, meaning we have the wisdom of Christ. That's the same wisdom that the people ask. What wisdom is this? That is, that is granted to them that by his hand we are seeing such mighty works. What kind of wisdom is this? What kind of wisdom is this? What kind of blessing is this? What kind of honor is this? What kind of... Of, 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 of power is this. These are the things that are available to us as long as we are sons. Amen. We are joint heirs with Christ. These things I mentioned, those are the things that belong to you. Any other thing you see is a lie of the devil. You need to rise up and tackle it as a son. In closing, all these things you actualize them as you grow. Are you hearing me? There is power. There is more power. Then there is great power. Greater power. Exceeding great power. These are in levels. The, the more you, you shift in your level of growth, the more of these things you experience in your life. Listen to me. Life is simple. Just follow God. Simple. I'm telling you, just follow God. Things will fall in place. Don't allow distractions anymore. Don't be on and off anymore. Just concentrate and follow God. Things will arrange themselves. Life is simple. It, just follow him. Say, follow me, I will make you. Just follow him. Don't be distracted. Just follow him. Just follow him. Just grow. Let God see that the things he told you yesterday, those things have become practical in your life. You are not passing it. Then it changes your level. That is the major way God raised our change of level. The things I told you yesterday, has it changed your life? Are we seeing it working in your life? That's how God rates growth. It's not by speaking in more tongues. It's not by being changing title in church. No, pastor can change your title. Why God has not changed anything? Amen. It is God has said, anger rests in the bosom of fools. To what extent has anger lost its hold on you? That is your promotion exam. God checks that one to say, okay, this one will move. He says, love your neighbor. Love God and love your neighbors. Then he checks you and says, to what extent has selfishness disappeared from this person's life? So, okay, selfishness has, it has reduced. So, let's change his level. But keep hearing the word, selfishness is still the same. Anger is still the same. Unforgiveness is still the same. Immorality is still the same. Still the same. No, this one is a child. Let him remain under tutors and governors. The tutor is the Holy Spirit. The governor is the word of God. Rise up from your feet. You are praying for one minute because our time is fast. Paying. Oh Lord, I no longer want to remain as a baby, as a child. I want to grow. I want to grow into my inheritances. 
Is somebody praying? I want to grow. I want to grow into my inheritance. I want to grow. I want to mature into my inheritance. Babies cry, but sons manifest. I want to grow. I want to grow. I want to grow. I have cried enough. I have complained enough. I am numbered enough. I want to grow. I want to grow. I want to grow. Is somebody praying at all? Mama Nene, Simele Monti. Mama, 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 in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Galatians 4 9. We're going to pray that and then we are going. Galatians 4 9. He says, After all those things we read, after all those things he spoke about we being sons. He said, but now, after you have known God, or rather you are known of God, how do you now again turn to the weak and beggarly elements? Whereunto you desire again to be in bondage? Anytime you step out of the world, he said, this thing pastor is saying, it doesn't work fast. I need sharp, 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 sharp money. Sharp, sharp. The moment you step out, he said, what do you enter? Bondage. Because the elements of this world, they are weak. They are weak. You cannot continue hearing the word and remain the same. You are going to pray, Father. Father, let your word begin to find expression in my life. Let your word structure my life. Let your word mold my life. Let your word direct my life. Let your word impact my life. Let your word influence my life. Let those wicked be shut in Jesus mighty name we pray Amen. in one minute all eyes close you are here this morning physically here or anywhere hearing this message you say pastor I'm in bondage to the elements of this world I don't want to remain any longer in this bondage I want to give my life to Jesus you want to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ Maybe you backslidden and you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. Wherever you may be this morning in this auditorium, I'd like you to place your right hand on your chest right where you are. And I'll pray this prayer with you and your life will take a new turn from today. Go ahead, don't be ashamed of anybody. Just place that right hand on your chest. Say, Jesus, I need you in my life. Just place the hand on your chest and repeat this. I'll count one to five if you want to join those who have done already. One, two, three. Don't be ashamed of anybody. It's your day. Three, four, five. Put the hand on your chest very well and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, today I come to you. Save me. Wash me clean by your precious blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary for my sake. Jesus, have mercy on me. From today, I accept you as my Lord. And my personal savior jesus thank you for saving me thank you for delivering me in jesus mighty name amen keep the hand on your chest our officers will give you a form please help us feed it and return it to them immediately after the closing let me pray for you i decree a new level new life new life for you in the name of jesus the devil's power over your life is broken and you will not return to the world anymore in jesus mighty name Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus for that harvest, somebody. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now, time is fast spent. I will release the blessing. At the same time, the offering basket will go around. We have just three minutes to close the service. Lift up your hands to heaven right now. 
with your offerings. I pronounce your offerings, your tithes, your kingdom investment blessed and multiplied back to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I decree your harvest will look for you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Just cast your offerings at the same time. If you are here, this first service is your first time in this church on a Sunday morning like this also. If today is your first time, can you wave your hands to Jesus? Anyone here today, this is your first time. Is there anyone like that? I want to welcome you in a special way. Please be upstanding. We are closing already. It's not time to sit down. Amen. Anyone here today for the first time in this first service? Just wave your hands to Jesus. Let's see you. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you, ma'am. Amen. Can we welcome you at the front here? You are here for this first service. And it's your first time ever here. Somebody invited you. Come forward. One more time. You, 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 welcome. You, you, you are welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You are welcome. We say you are welcome. You are welcome to our first. You are welcome. You are welcome. God bless you, sir. God bless you, ma. You're welcome in the name of Jesus. We appreciate your coming. God bless you, dear. God bless you. We appreciate your coming. This is Restoration House. Here, yeah, God is raising giants and restoring destinies. We meet on Sundays, 6 a.m. first service, 8 a.m. second service, like the second service will soon begin now. And also on Wednesdays, 5.30 p.m. for Holy Ghost Fireful Service. Anyone you come is equally loaded. We'd like to know you more. We'd like to relate with you more. So if you are within the environment, why not? If you are making the decision, you can be part of us. Something great is waiting for you. Amen. But meanwhile, our officers will tell you one or two things and then pray for you. But let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, I decree it's a new level for you. A new level for you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please go ahead with our officer. He has something for you briefly. God bless you. Can we clap for our wonderful guests? You are welcome. You are welcome to our blessed nation. You are welcome. You are welcome. Now lift up your hands to heaven. Don't forget on Wednesday, 5.30 p.m., we're going to have an explosive time in God's presence. On Thursday, we are going to be having, by God's grace, the children and teenagers um, Bible club, and it will be an impartation meeting because it's the last one for the month of May. Hallelujah. Praise God. So to be a combined one, it's going to be fireful. Hallelujah. This evening or this afternoon, 3 p.m., we are having a special youth program in this auditorium tagged Heart to Heart Talk with the senior pastor. Hallelujah. We're going to have questions and answers and a lot. And by God's grace, we'll be physically available. Amen. It's going to be a wonderful time. Have you shared the flyers already? You finished it yesterday? Ah, okay. Lift up your hands. Go in peace in the name of Jesus. Return with your testimonies in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. May He cause His face to shine upon you. May be gracious and merciful unto you from this day forward. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In case you pay for the second service, relax and attend it. You don't have anything you are rushing them to go and do. Calm down and attend it. Something will still drop in the name of Jesus Christ. 2021. 20